pub. Is he still there? He had to catch a flight. Sean, Sean, Sean. Smoking, you out there? Sean, you're out there. Sean, you're out there. Yeah, come on up, Sean. You, Sean, you, you were out there taking rooms, getting people's ways and stuff. You should have two shirts. Sean Farmer, two shirts for being out there. Wasn't in the competition, but he was in the pipe. Farmer definitely goes through stages where he like takes care of himself and and I he <laughs> this is kind of hard one but today he's like I would totally quit drinking if I had a reason to like if I had a girl that I was totally in love with I would probably like quit drinking but I don't really have a reason to quit drinking that was pretty heavy <laughs> because when he drinks <laughs> he is not afraid and it's actually kind of scary he turns into this caveman and you can't you can't you know, you're like, farm, and he, he's like a dog, and you have to say, farmer, you can't talk to him and be reasonable, you have to say, farmer, sit, now, and he'll like, okay, but definitely, uh, <laughs> gotta be careful about crossing the line. Yeah! We just brought wool pants from the army store yeah. at Paris Sorrells, right? And we feed t her TV out from the Paris Sorrells, if you could get a pair of dental liners, you were like, Jesus Christ, on a fucking popsicle stick. Right? That's why we're here, man, today. Because we were here. Back then, man. Back then? Dude, one of the first times I met Farmer was um, at the My Way premiere video. For, it was Arnett's video. And he showed up with like fur boots and some bondage weird gear like this with a leash on his girlfriend in the same sort of get up. And I'm just like, who is this guy? Like, he's so like unreal. And, um, you know, he's just, uh, he's never been afraid to go the distance for anything, and uh, he's a great guy. He's just like, uh, way into snowboarding, way into the backcountry. house is super trash, man. Because I've just been on the go lately. If someone wants to stay with me, they can stay with me. I, I've told people all winter, come up and stay. Like, nobody came and stayed with me, dude, except for the guys I work with. See, it's like, it's really for, it's like an emergency thing for the guys that I work with because we plow snow and sometimes if it snows really bad, then they don't have to drive home to Reno. They can like stay up here. And so I'm just like the house man guy, house mom, I guess. I'm not a very good house mom, but. Yeah, but, but I've been telling my friends, man, come on up, I have a room. Yeah. The beds are all made and ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sean Farmer's an interesting individual on so many levels. He's, he's super high-functioning intelligent and a total idiot at the same time. You know, I love the guy with my whole heart. And he's super creative, super talented, and uh, is completely ADD as I am, so he's just all over the board. The boot dryer, the boot dryer I made. <laughs> it's like it goes together like this, so you can like transport it, you know? And then you put this blow dryer on here like this. Look at that. It's rad, huh? Sick, huh? And then you put your boots in. You put your boots in there. And then, and then your glove, you put this in your boots, you know, and then your gloves on top of here. And it totally kicks out the heat, man. Like in 10 minutes, 10 minutes, you're good. 
should patent that. It's so badass. And, oh, it's probably a fire hazard and everything. I want to get a timer for it so you can just set it for like 10 minutes or 20 minutes. Because, you know, okay, have you ever seen those boot darts? They don't do anything. Like, you put, you're like, what is this? It blows like room temperature air in there. And you're like, what, what in the fuck is that? <laughs> do you want to What you want is like when you come out of, when you get your boots out of your car because you forgot and left them in and they're frozen solid. Yeah. You put that thing on there, I swear to God, in 10 minutes, 15 minutes tops. Bone dry, shit is just steaming off. <laughs> yeah, if you want to grab the wish you should get a different shirt. I, I just wanted to know how you got into snowboard because you're where are you from originally? Missouri. Where, where at? Missouri. Jefferson City. Some people say Missouri, some people say Missouri, you know. Yeah. No, it's Jefferson City, Missouri. I just got on a thing, you know, whatever. It was just a stunt, it was something to do for like first for the actual you know, right, yeah, I got on what we called a snowboard at the time. One of my buddies even had one of those Sims ones. It's like a plastic tray kind of thing. You, you bolt your skateboard deck to it. But, I mean, we just did that because it was wintertime and you couldn't really skateboard. So, you know, and we thought it was cool. At one point, right when I, I graduated from high school, I went to college for one semester, and I was just, like, pretty much not into it. I mean, got okay grades, and I just, I was like, I'm going to go ski. My, the idea was skiing. It wasn't even snowboarding. I was like, I was going to go ski out in Colorado. So I'll take a semester off or, you know, a year off and go, go mess around out there and ski. And then I went out there and then I saw a snowboard video. I think it was called One Track Mind or something. It was an old Burton one. Or, once I saw that, you know, I was just like, I skateboard, man. I'm getting one of those. And me and my buddy Joey Ford, we went to Wave Rave in a Boulder. We had like our whole paychecks for the week, and we bought the only two snowboards they had in that in that store, which was two Burton uh, Elite, yeah, Performer Elites with no high backs. That was eighty five, eighty six, and so by the end of the season, well, n no ski areas allowed it really. We had to go to uh, Berthed Pass so that we could snowboard. That was the only place Berthed Pass would allow snowboarding. No, no, not Summit County. No, no Breckenridge. No nothing until like halfway through the season, then they converted it. Then they had the world championships in the spring. All, I mean, they did complete 180. So then I started riding at, at, at a Breckenridge, and then by the time it was time for like the world championships, I was pretty decent, because no one around there could like, you couldn't ride unless you hiked or you know, went to Birth of Pass. So I was in the mix pretty quick. My name's Sean Farmer. I've been snowboarding about five or 10 years, and uh, it's pretty much all I do. Yeah, Farm's always been pretty much Farm. He's a he's a really amazing guy. He's got a, a really unique personality, and um, if he's on your good side, I mean, if 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 you're on his good side, it's a good thing, you know. And we we pretty much clicked right off the bat, my brother and I and Sean, and and he's been my friend ever since. And um, some people would, would say he's kind of crazy in certain ways, and on a snowboard, definitely. I was living in Colorado at the time, and I was doing a little contest circuit a little bit, and I was not really into it, because we'd go in the backcountry and kind of take pictures, and, I, and we always looked cool, and then I'd go to these events, and like they had just such a, I don't know, the stuff was not that cool, the calf pipes were horrible, and once in a while I could throw a backflip or do something pretty rad, but I was never consistent in a half pipe, and like, you know, I, I just wasn't into the, the contest scene, and then I went to the Mount Baker Bank Slalom is what it was, in uh, Washington. I got second place in the event the first time I ever went. And then uh, behind Craig Kelly. <laughs> and uh, anyway, like I, from Colorado to Washington and it snowed like five feet, I don't know. It just snows and snows and snows up there. And I was riding with Craig Kelly and I was like, is this how it is all the time up here? And he's like, yeah, pretty much, you know? And I was like, rad. So the next year I moved there. Baker's got just crazy steeps and it, dumps there. He was living in Baker at one point and he just was the, one of the first guys to really nail pillow lines and just charge the steeps and he was uh, super, super gutsy on a snowboard. You just go huge. Yeah, Yeah. Sean Farmer came in and um, you got to understand in like 1990, 1991, while everybody, and I mean everybody, who was making a living off of snowboarding was competing. Um, a small group of guys, as opposed to competing, they cut down on their contest regimen. Instead of doing one a month, they decided to do two a year, and they started filming. And they saw that this is a way to 
take a sport that's cold, remote, and bring it to the masses. But to rewind a little bit, Nick Parada, I met him when I was competing and touring around Colorado. At one point, just a buddy of his, they were from LA, and one of his buddies was from LA, and he was into filming and 16 millimeter, and uh, they started making this movie, and they were just like, hey, you wanna be in this movie? And I'm like, cool, let's do the movie, you know? So, I mean, it's sort of a blur, but it was like the, the Hatchet Brothers, Nick Parada, our buddy Jeff, uh, this Jeff dude from, uh, I can't remember his last name right now. Whatever, we just started making this movie, man. Totally bored one. It was our first film and we really didn't have this, you know, wasn't the concept wasn't out there of, you know, shooting dudes' segments on the certain person. There was no really set formula. Those guys were our bros and they were, they were available to shoot and we decided to commit a whole winter to it. Basically it was just, you know, Nick, Dave and Sean were the main stars of that movie. Well, I mean, I did some cool stuff. I jumped the Mount Baker Road Gap, you know, that was, that, that I'd heard talked about forever, but no one, I never saw any pictures of it. So I was just like, look, right here, right here, this is it, okay. Let's go up there and do that. He was definitely one of the ballsiest snowboarders back in that day in 88, 89, 90. We were driving up to Baker to shoot, and we're like, that looks like a place you could jump the road. We just, you know, built the kicker and Sean jumped it and didn't really think that much of it. Almost got hurt on that a couple of times, like just on the in run coming in like fell down like directly over the road like the snow just dumped off and I was like oh my god but did it again and s pulled that pretty clean and I remember just I was sitting on the road drinking beers just going what a fucking nutbag you know and he was like like he you know kept coming over he's like it like hey rank with I'm gonna do it with my shirt off you know peels his shirt off he just cuts I'm like what are you doing you know and he pulled it just did the sweet kicked out method air and landed it didn't even eat shit like I expected wanted him to you know Jeff Tullock he did it too I don't think anyone even knows that he did it but he did it too Sean had a duck under this tree branch right before the in run because because uh, it was low I'm sure someone's hatched off of the tree saw by now but it was just it was just a small branch going across the in run but. Of course, back in the day, we didn't think about doing stuff like that. Yeah, I would never cut a tree branch down either. <laughs> I think I was the first one to hit that, you know. Now guys, I mean, I did a method over it. Now guys are doing rodeos and who knows what over it. Like, plus they build a cheese wedge that's six feet high. I mean, we, we built like, for us a kicker was like, okay, we got a kicker. <laughs> you know, stomp on that a little bit. That was it, you know. And then we got to go to Alaska. I don't know, like all this stuff happened in a short period of time. Like, um, you know, I was, I was in Colorado, I was riding Sims boards. And then I was like, then I was in Washington. I was, next thing I knew I was on GNS boards. Cause what happened was I went from Washington to Tahoe to film some more. And then after we filmed all spring and winter, and then we got sent that summer to Alaska with K2. It just goes, hey, do you want to be on K2? We'll pay you. And I go, okay. K2 thing was probably my best run, you know, and, and then we just started jumping off stuff up there in Alaska, and like, you know, they dropped us off on a glacier with uh, an airplane, and you know, we're flying in on the airplane, looking up at the mountains, like, the, you're, you're down here in the airplane, and here's this face, and you're going, nee, and you're looking up at this, I mean, rock wall, just going, damn, you know, and then we got dropped off with a bunch of like, free heel ski gear and a bunch of like crampons and backpacks. I mean, we didn't, I didn't know nothing about any of that stuff, you know, a bunch of like dried food and stuff. Like luckily, the people that were with us were organized enough to get the good stuff. And the North Face, we had all the North Face gear, you know, North Face tents, North Face bags, and, and just started climbing this mountain, the Moose's Tooth, which is 9,000. Doesn't sound like a lot, but up there 9,000 is like 9,000, you know what I mean? It's like. 8,000 feet above the glacier or something so you're up there and we were definitely some of the first snowboarders to to get recognition for going up there and certainly probably a, one of only a handful of people from the from the lower 48 as they call it to go up there and do that stuff you know my other buddies were from Alaska so they were they were dinking around and getting in some helis but we were the we were some of the first guys probably out of you know a handful of five people you know, maybe Zellers and Bert and me and Nick and, you know, Pappas were the first guys to do it, really, for sure. Well, it was totally bored. And then, then Hatchets worked at, for, for, uh, 
fall line films one year, you know? Sean Farmer came into the scene in Critical Condition, which would have been our third film, and he had worked with, uh, it was the original Totally Bored, and it got a little bit of play and then kind of disappeared off the map. And uh, that year, Hatchet came to work for me. Farmer, who was working with them, really had no film company to go to. So he called me and just uh, was pretty much like the cockiest asshole you ever would have met. He's just like, dude, your film needs me. I'm like, what do you mean my film needs? He's like, dude, no one's doing the kind of stuff I'm doing. You need me in your film. Uh, and he just wouldn't stop calling. And at some point, I'm just like, okay, dude, come on. I saw your film. I saw you do some stuff in it. Yeah, you're okay, but you kind of got this like ape-like style and you're kind of cro magnon and, and, uh, and he just kept going, cut, cut calling. They called me, man. That part is bullshit. Where they're all, Farmer called us. They called me, or they at least like put the word out, you know what I mean? And I, I was just like, okay, these guys want to do it. I'm available, you know? Point the camera at me, you know? They wanted to put me on the, on the map, so. And finally, and that's when we came up with the thing. It's like, all right, fine, dude. Put up or shut up. We sent him a bus ticket because he was stuck in Utah. He couldn't get out to talk. He couldn't even get himself here to film. So I was like, fine. We sent him a bus ticket and said, put up or shut up. You know, you're talking all the smack, back it up. You know, I think it's basically pretty close to the truth. I can't, I don't remember riding the bus. I think I might have bought my own plane ticket. I think they said they'd buy me a plane ticket. And I flew, I was like, fuck you guys. I'll just buy my own fucking plane ticket. And so I came out and then, you know, we came out of the bus station or whatever. But anyway. There was some argument, there was definitely some argument or issue there. And uh, I think he pretty much lived with me on and off for two or three years at that, after that point. Because he just, you know, he, sponsorship and him were a really tough animal to sort of cohabitate together. He was a very uh, uh, outspoken and uh, not always um, controllable commodity. And he's got a million things and a million ideas and a million things he wants to do. And when he gets something in his head, he just doesn't really let it, let it you know, rest until he gets it out and, and does it. And that was kind of like his rap. He really wanted to, he wanted to be a rap star. Not just a snowboard star, he wanted to be a rap star too. <laughs> so we you know, gave him a shot at it. This is the greatest fucking rhyme of all time. Drill a hole in your head and pour it into your mind and check it in. I think I just kept hammering on Jerry and go, man, I want to make a video. I want to make a rap video. I want to make a song. I got this song, you know? And, uh, and he's like, fine, let's do it. And luckily, he had this buddy who could, who could loop. As soon as I heard that people were looping beats, I was like, man, you take a beat, song that's already a hit and sing on it again, you know, how can you go wrong? You know, unless you're like you're a total retard, you know? I was like, here's what I want to do, man. I want to take this Doors lick, you know? So that and and I, don't ask me how they got away with that or what the hell they did or if they settled or I have no idea. My original partner in my first company with Artie was this guy named Kendrick Wells. And uh, he was an old friend of mine I grew up with in Marin. And uh, he uh, had a little recording studio and recorded some rappers. He uh, was one of Tupac's really good friends. He worked with Farmer and myself to come up with that first song. I was loaded one day and dropped a 40 in, in the studio and broke it all over all the wires and everything. It was like, you know, that was the type of stuff I did. but. But we got it done. And then I, I think I did one take. I, I know not more than two. I was just like, man, you know, I, I'll feel it right now. But if you keep making me do this over and over, I'll, I'll just, you know. So I think we did like one take and a couple overdubs. And that was it. You know, a couple like punch tracks. Yeah. Those were the old days before we knew you could attach cameras. I think I just pretty much hung out on the hood. You know, I was back old school style. Before I knew about cool mounts and fancy rigging and grips and gaffers. You can get a lot more done in life sometimes before you know how to do it. You just do it and, you know, it kind of works. So I just, I knew that would work and, and it, you know, whether it's a hit or not, I don't care, but people like it. I dig it and I thought it came out pretty good. So they did a good job I and mean, I think they did pretty awesome production back then. That, that year, that movie was the shit, you know, I was like, yeah, at the trade show or whatever, but. There's very few people I've been as impressed with as him. He is one of the ballsiest technicians I've ever met. We'll be on the ground, you know, 
as we'll be back at the Barbie angles. We used to call it the barbecue angle. And he'll look at a line. He's going to make two turns. I'm going to pop off here, jump 20 feet, land in that patch right there, you know, a 15 foot patch of snow, get it together, and then pop off that 50 footer. And I'm like, okay, have fun. <laughs> I'll be down here. I got the angle. You go. And he'll go up there and he'll just freaking do it every time. It's just his awareness of where he was in spatial relationship to the mountain, the snow, and, and his ability to get himself to where he said it was hands down, you know, better than almost everyone except I'd say like Tom Burt. Farmer was badass. He was, uh, he was exactly that. He was like a bear. He was almost like a biker. And uh, he was a big guy. He had all that crazy hair, but he was just funny. He was hilarious back in the days. And uh, we, we had so much fun riding together. Hell of a lot of talent. I mean, he could, he could ride steep cliffs and, and big jumps like nobody's business. He was like a Tom Burt style rider, you know? Those guys are kind of in the same world. Farmer was kind of a I don't know, a loose cannon rider? I don't know. <laughs> he kind of did a little bit of everything, uh, but mostly he free rode. So um, he rode kind of big mountains, but he also did tricks and airs and uh, stupid stunts and things. But he, but he was actually real progressive. He was like doing, you know, backflips to fakie. You know, he's the first person I ever saw do anything like that. Uh, you know, I mean, pretty early on, the only other kind of guy going and land and fake he was rank with at that time but he was just you know he brought he brought a character another character to, to the sport you know I still like think the critical condition parts probably my best thing you know it's like I had a lot of delusions of grandeur and stuff and just get sidetracked you know man I like I, I like rapping really at the time I was like man all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some, I'm gonna make this rhyme and I'm just gonna walk right I'm gonna step right out of this whole thing and like just start doing hip hop, you know? And then, I don't know, man, I, I love the mountains. The city just f fucks me up. And that's where it seems like all that glamour boy shit goes on, or like even the production and stuff. Like, if I have to actually drive around down there and try to like figure this shit out, man, I, I'll just, I'll literally just turn around and just leave town, you know? It's like, I just freak out. I, I freak out in Reno, you know? Back off, over the handlebars, catapult. Jim Hale, he's a buddy of mine. I met that guy in, uh, in 85 or 86 or 87, like, so I was still in Colorado. He was always this crazy heavy metal dude. The band we were in was called Soak, but he just kind of brought me in because he's like, we want to put rap with metal, you know, which is really a novel idea at the time. And no one, I still don't think anyone's doing it right. I mean, there's a couple guys who's ready to get some sheen and then anthrax. We were doing it right at the same time, or maybe even before some of those guys. And and uh, he's just like, yeah, we, let's. You can be the rapper. And I'm like, okay. But we always had, we were always button heads. It's so hard to have two singers. Played in that band for quite a few years, off and on. And it's just so hard to balance. Like you're trying to be a pro snowboarder and go, whatever, around the world, and then like come back to this band and like, you know, everybody's pissed at you because you're gone for for three weeks and. But it was still fun, man. We rocked. And that whole game is so crazy, but I still am into it. I still like rapping and stuff. And, and I love snowboarding. I still love snowboarding. I don't care whether it's, you know, anyone's around or not, I just dig it. The thing that trips me out, man, is, is like, if things would have fell together differently, you know, we'd probably be sitting in my mansion by the, by the pool or something. But it didn't, like, and, and I don't know, like, sometimes I feel like you're just chasing that thing, and like, for some people it all happens, and like, when it is happening, you better get it, you know, and, 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 t and hang on to it as tight as you can. I, t I steered, I took a couple wrong turns, I think, and I'd rather fucking pound nails than deal with, with some of these kooks, dude, that have nothing to do, you know, and I could go crazy on this, but I, I just saw a lot of this stuff coming, and I was just like, man, you know, where, where were, you, you know, you want it to be, you just want to be with people that you trust or that you believe in, and I just think a lot of these people are just like, they're like, yeah, what's the next big thing? It's like, yo, fucking the slinky, man. I don't fucking know, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
I think that he scared a lot of people because he was a little bit of a loose cannon. He did um, kind of do his own thing. And if you're trying to promote an image and you're trying to promote a wholesome image or you're trying to promote a healthy image and all of a sudden you got Farmer drunk, you know, taking his clothes off, jumping off something or, or getting in a fight or yelling at someone, then that's a tough thing when you're a company that has to justify results to a board. You know, people that don't understand the nature of the sport. And I think that's where he got into some problems. You know, that said, he had a good run at it. You know, he did get paid. He got paid well for a while. Um, so, for sure, someone believed in him at some point. But, you know, he had different ideas on things, too, you know. He didn't want to make the board that was the all-around-everything board. He wanted to make a big board that he could fly 100-foot cliffs off of. And, you know, there's a small amount of the market that rides that way. I don't know what the reason was, but, man, boards were always breaking. Those things broke, too, but... But they just seem to like have more life than a lot of the stuff that was out there, and, and uh, I just always thought, and I still like big boards. I mean, they're great for certain things, you know. They're just, it's it's kind of a lot of work, is all, <laughs> to ride one. <laughs> you know, the farmer, the 185 centimeter farmer board made by Summit was not a board that everyone was riding. You know, that thing was great if you wanted to drop an 80 foot cliff, and you had nice fresh powder on the way in and powder on the way out, and you had enough you know, balls and muscle to turn the thing. But, you know, in his sort of theory, it's like, no, no, that's what I want, you know. And then he had a, a pretty good run with K2 for a while, and K2, you know, had a bunch of boards under his name that encompassed, you know, a, a broader riding style. I had a pretty good run at it, and, uh, you know, I, I look back and I was like, I could have done this, this, and this different, and, like, maybe even still be up in there. But, uh, you know, it's like, what are you going to do, man? That's just, it's, you're freaking snowboarding, you know what I mean? What do you want, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I remember getting asked to do that first Ascent movie with Sean Farmer and Terrier and Nick Parada. I had never met Nick or Sean Farmer. And it was New Year's before we started filming that movie and I met him at a bar. And I just thought he was a sketchy dude. <laughs> and I was like, I have to go on a trip with this crazy guy for three weeks. And I was all scared, but then when I actually got out to the back country with him, and they were just super chill and made it like the best experience of my life. And I mean, Sean is a crazy, crazy man, and he can rap like no other. But he's a hell of a snowboarder. Um, I was impressed, I mean, I know he felt a little overwhelmed when we built this massive jump out there in the mountains because it's not really his, his style there. But um, you know, whatever I, you know, whatever myself and, and uh, Travis were doing on the jump, he was beating that tenfold on just getting down these crazy runs in the mountain there. I was impressed. I, I was just blown away because he looked at it so differently from the way I would look at it. I'm like, oh, I want to jump off that, and he's like, no, I'm gonna creep down this ridge, and then I'm gonna cut over and. It was just impressive to see, you know, how he looks at it. I mean, because everybody, everybody sees something, but it's always different from, you know, what everybody else sees. Uh, I, I like big mountain stuff, man. I really like slashes. I like doing airs and, and you know, I, I'm not super focused on tricks. If I do a big grab or a big method or big back or something, and just, just a really sweet line, I like to try to be relatively fluid and I like to haul ass. I like speed a lot. You know, like really carrying a lot of speed and just getting like to that point where like, oh my God, I can't even turn anymore, you know? I'm just not obsessed with tricks or anything so much as just, I just like being out in the mountain, man. I like snowboarding, you know? I don't have to try to do a lot of uh, craziness. I just take whatever's in front of me, do a couple things get out of there, you know, and keep going. Sean's one of those guys, I wish there was more people like him today in snowboarding, more like Farmer. Not to say there's not great personalities out there, but um, Farmer's just one of those guys that you just, you meet him and he sticks in your head forever. And you just, he's the kind of guy that his personality and his charisma, just everything about the guy, you, you can't get, you just, you just know him. And, and I just, like I said, I wish there was more people like that in snowboarding today that, it's almost like the marketability of someone like that, you know, of just someone with that amazing of a, he, he's an amazing person and, and there's not a lot of guys like that around. And, and um, he's, 
he's just a, he's a he's he's amazing. Okay. All right. Ready? <laughs> like that. <laughs> What's this shirt? Jefferson City Correctional Facility. That's where I'm from. Jefferson City, Missouri. Oh, okay. It gets the job done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. Black dog, over the handlebars, catapult, through the windshield of your car, whiplash, skull crash, car.